Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to 37, New American Standard Bible. And Jesus was going through all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Seeing the people, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. My goal in life was to be just like my dad. That's what I wanted. I wanted to be like my dad. So I always told everyone that I wanted to be a missionary in the Amazon because that's what my dad was. My dad, he came to Brazil when he was five years old. My grandfather moved to Brazil in 1955. And, and in 76, my dad and my mom, my two older sisters, I wasn't born yet, they moved here to Santarém. And when my father arrived here, my mother, it was a very, very difficult place to, to be a missionary because there was just a lot of resistance. Uh, here where we live now, we used to wake up at night with a lot of gang fights, people getting killed in front of our house. Well, I was born and I grew up in the middle of all this. And my parents, my father, my mother, what they did and what, what really, really gave me a heart for the ministry and for missions is the way they presented God's work for me. Almost every day, they told me how privileged I was to work for the Lord and to do it in the most amazing place in the world, the Amazon Basin. So I grew up, if you wanna call it brainwashed, that's okay, uh, completely convinced that I was the luckiest kid on earth. And so when my dad passed away in 1994, I was 13 years old, and of course that was the hardest day of my life. And up until then, he was not only my father, but he was by far my best friend my best, best, best friend. So when he died, it wasn't like he was sick, wasn't like we expected it, it was just from one day to the next. Uh, all of a sudden got the news that, you know, his airplane crashed and he died. When he died, I was, uh, I was challenged. And what is my real calling? Well, he died on a Thursday afternoon. And on Monday, God spoke to my heart very strongly. And he gave me a calling. I was only 13 years old, but it was so strong in my life that I've never doubted it. From that time on, I've never, ever doubted God's calling on my life to be a missionary as well. My parents had everything to do with, uh, with my calling. Um, the way they raised me, uh, the discipline, uh, the vision that they imparted to me. One of the main things that my parents did is they didn't only teach me, but they taught me through example. There's a lot of, a lot of other uh, missionaries that I've seen over the years that they didn't teach their kids through example and their kids ended up growing up not wanting anything to do with the ministry with being a missionary uh, they ended up going back to the United States and just jumping into the world of where money is the God and see how much money you can possibly make because they did not like the ministry because of the way the parents presented it to them but my parents taught me through example praise God for that uh, so if it weren't for my, my father and my mother, I know that, that I, would, I wouldn't be on the mission field today. Discipleship, if you look at the example of Jesus, it's an actual day-to-day, -day, uh, the word in Portuguese is convivio, in English would be living, almost living together, not necessarily in the same home, but a direct contact, all the time in contact with that person. And uh, so the idea is, is to reproduce the character of Jesus in your disciple. Your character may have flaws, but Jesus' character does not have flaws. So if we can reproduce the character of Jesus in our disciple, then we've been a good disciple. In my own personal life, my father, first of all, was my one-on-one -on -one discipler. And the vision that I have today, the calling that I have today was imparted from my discipler, my father. After my father passed away, God used several other different great men of God in my life so that I could be accountable to them and so that they could speak into my life, correct me where I was wrong, and, and give me the help that I needed. And so for me personally, it changed my life. If it were not for one-on-one -on -one discipleship, 
I guarantee you that I would not be where I am today serving the Lord. I would be a miserable wreck. And I've seen this with my disciples as well. People that were lost, completely lost. Today, winning people for Jesus, making other disciples as well, planning other churches. The Bible never said, Jesus never said to pray for the harvest field. No, we pray for workers. And there's only one way that we can raise up workers, and that is through discipleship. The Great Commission in Matthew, I know it better in Portuguese, so I'm going to say it in Portuguese. It says like this. Ide, portanto, e fazei discípulos de todas as nações, making disciples of all the nations. We've seen through the, through the centuries so many big moves of God, many hundreds, thousands of people getting saved, and then within a few short generations, it's all gone. It disappears. Why? Because they did not make disciples that truly lasted. So my father passed away. I was 13 years old. He's gone. Someday I'm going to be gone. If Jesus doesn't return first, I'm going to leave too. I'm going to die. But who am I going to leave? I want to leave a generation of disciples who will make disciples better than I can. That way, we will have a great move of God that won't end. In fact, it'll usher in the return of our Lord Jesus. You say, I can't go to China. I can't go. We'll start in your backyard. Start with your neighbor, and you be faithful with the little, and God will put you over much. He'll send you anywhere He wants to send you if you're faithful with what He's giving you today. So, we're here doing the exact same thing my dad was doing, uh, planting churches in the Amazon Basin. Uh, we may be here for the rest of our lives, or God may take us to another part of the world, but as long as we're planting churches, being missionaries, that's all my wife and I want to do. And they say, like, like father, like son. You know, that's exactly what happened in my situation. I would say like father, like mother, like son, <laughs> because my mom, just as much, you know. My dad and my mom, they would, they would tell us, you guys can be anything you want in life, as long as you're a missionary. You can be a doctor, but you'll be a doctor missionary. You can be anything you want. You can pick any profession you want, as long as you're a missionary in that field. And I ended up being just a missionary, nothing but a missionary. <laughs> so I'm okay with that.